Yo, the initial hype wave around the FMOS token launch is coming down a little bit. Obviously, also with the recent Terra stuff that's been going on, it dragged down the whole market. Also, the market sentiment, people are getting more cautious and panicking more. And that's totally normal. And that at the same time, price the opportunity to stack up solid positions, right? That's what I did throughout 2018, 2019, when we had this crazy bear market with capitulation left and right. And now we're seeing a similar sentiment. That's why I want to give a brief update on what's been going on with FMAS. So I made a tweet here where I said, guys, please drop me some questions that you need answers to in regards to FMOS. Um, even Seki engaged here. It's one of the most common questions I get is uh, how to claim the airdrop. And I think um, there are still a lot of small little bugs here and there, um, but you can technically connect both your Kepler and your MetaMask here. And you can see it will automatic te automatically tell you whether you are eligible. For example, this account um, is a valid account, but it's just not eligible. Now, what I see sometimes is that it says not supported here on the top right um, in front of your Kepler sign, the Kepler logo. And maybe what you could do, you click on the Kepler logo, and then you click on these three lines here. You click on settings, manage connections. Then you choose here FMOS, FMOS beta, that's the one. And then you just manually remove those connections with the site, disable connection, yes. And then if you refresh the site, it should ask you again to, um, yeah, add this network, requesting connections. So you approve that and then maybe it works now. So maybe just try to refresh that. Let me know in the comments if that worked for you. And if it didn't work, then please also let me know in the comments down below and we'll try to help um, in your individual case if there's anything wrong, whether it's Ledger, uh, Kepler or MetaMask. Anyways, heading over to an account where I actually am eligible to get tokens here. So just that we can see how the claiming process works, right? Um, to get the 25%, uh, the first ones, you have to vote on a governance proposal, then you have to stick your tokens, and then you have to execute an IBC transfer. Those three things already work. Um, and then the using of the EVM, which is not live yet, um, you can't uh, claim the last 25% of your FMOS airdrop. So stay tuned for that. Watch out for announcements. I think it will be very soon that you can claim the last 25%. Um, at least that's what the team told me. But yeah, um, stay tuned for that. Now, if we talk about staking, there's also a very frequently asked question. Um, you can click over here actually on all validators and you can see who are the validators on FMOS. Um, you can also see that Stake C2 is currently in the top 10 with 216,000 FMOS and delegations. Really, really appreciate your, your support, your delegations. Um, commission is always at 5% on all our chains. It also counts for Atom. It counts for Osmosis, that counts for Juno, Sift Chain, you name it. Region Network, Persistence, Comdex, Loom Network. We're also massively ramping up our team for Stakesito. If you want to work with us, please drop me a DM on Twitter or Telegram, at Cryptocito, beware of scammers. But anyways, um, you can delegate your coins here directly by clicking uh, delegate. This user flow should be really familiar to you. So uh, pretty straightforward. Inflation, there will be a proposal. I think by the, by the time this video is up, the proposal might already be live. So check out this proposal. Um, there is a voting period of five days. And if this proposal passes, sticky reward should be live by at the end of this week, hopefully. So this is going to be really exciting. Speaking of voting, if you click here on the governance tab, you can see there's already 21 proposals um, in the voting or have already gone through. And um, yeah, one of them is even to sponsor an event during the Paris Ethereum conference. Take part in these governance proposals. As you knew with Juno in the beginning, if you voted on these proposals, you always got um, decent airdrops. So who knows what's coming? I don't know, but um, yeah, stay tuned for the projects launching on FMOS. There's a lot of them. In terms of IBC transfers, that's coming soon. This is a big pain point that I personally have right now because I have my Atom on the Cosmos Hub and there's currently no way I can bring my Atom onto the FMOS chain, but they are working on a solution because um, the IBC channel between FMOS and the Cosmos Hub was expired because the chain was down. And I think the expiration kicks in after a week or two weeks or something like that. Um, this is actually already the second proposal, 71, but one of the relayers didn't update at proposal 70, even though it passed. 
So they didn't technically execute on the vote outcome, which is why we see another one. One of the real big downsides, however, of Cosmos governance we're seeing right now, especially on the Cosmos Hub, is that we have a 14 day voting period. So this thing has to go all the way to June 4th, 7.37 a.m. UTC. And we can actually find the easiest access to multiple bridges here if we click on bridges on Diffusion, which is the Uniswap fork on FMOS. And then you have Nomad, Connects, Gravity Bridge, Seller, or Multichain. I don't know why um, FMOS is not integrated onto Gravity Bridge because this would be the easiest one. Um, but yeah, I don't know, maybe in the future it will be added there. But if you click on Nomad, you will be redirected to their site to again connect your wallet. And then let's say I want to send from Ethereum onto the FMOS chain. And I want to send, for example, wrapped ETH. You could just choose how much you want to send. You click on next. Well, you have to put in um, an amount. And then it takes, um, I think, less than an hour and the funds are there. Once you got your FMOS on the FMOS chain and you connect it to things, for example, like Diffusion, but there's also other applications. I'm not going to go into all of them today. Um, I made a video about this. There's EarnMOS, there's Cosland, there's other dApps in the ecosystem that are already up there. And you can have juicy API, APRs here of up to 463% on the diff USDC pool, for example. And if you go on um, stake, you can also see that you can currently stake your diff for 1,300 plus percent APR. Plus on top of that, Diffusion also had an airdrop, which you can claim if you click here on um, claim Diffusion airdrop. This one is only right now for the Uniswap users. It also says here, other airdrops will be announced shortly. They also just came out and said that the Osmo delegators for binary holdings validator and friends validator will be distributed soon. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, but going back to some of the questions here, FMOS on osmosis, this is also one thing that I am eagerly waiting for. And while I'm recording this video, um, there's a tweet from Guillermo, who is one of the engineers over at FMOS. He tweeted out that FMOS osmosis transfers through IBC will be going live later today, potentially. So um, what does this mean? There's also a YouTube video which shows that on the app, um, on the dashboard app.fmos.org, you can make these transfers. But I don't think that they will officially put in liquidity into any um, osmosis pool. Um, my guess would be that somebody would just make um, pools on osmosis frontier with their FMOS that they have maybe from the airdrop. And um, yeah, there will be um, a price for it, but I guess this liquidity could be extremely thin. So be careful with that. Um, however, this would be cool to see that we can move our FMOS assets um, between Osmosis, at least the FMOS token between Osmosis and the FMOS chain. But we have to wait for liquidity pools to um, be established and for deep liquidity to be there, right? So otherwise you get wrecked on the slippage potentially. So really be careful with that, right? Don't ape into any pool that has extremely thin liquidity. Now, Saki is saying a very interesting thing here because um, a lot of people, including myself, um, we have seen that the platform um, is sometimes very slow, right? Uh, and he's saying the platform would be a lot faster if validators set their gas price. So the problem here is that right now there's a lot of arbitrage opportunities that have high volumes um, and transactions get sent to the mempool, which is means that the um, transactions get congested a little bit and get stuck. Um, and some of the uh, transactions that you might send take forever to go through. And the answer to that, I asked this uh, to the team, they said that they will set a minimum, a global average minimum for validators so that it's um, less profitable for um, arbitrageurs to conduct uh, all these trades and to front run the community basically, who just want to maybe purchase some FMOS tokens. So this is being fixed as we speak. And I hope in the next week or two, the performance will go up um, massively. Also, uh, Jacob got involved here asking to what level and he recommends to get to 150k gas, which is about 10 cents. Now, this is also a very common question that I get. Um, people saying, I don't have or want to use MetaMask wallet. So will FMOS and its projects be usable in the near future with just Kepler wallet? Um, the answer to that is that yes, FMOS will be integrated in Kepler, but Kepler is not EVM compatible. So to run um, any sort of like programs or uh, do any contract calls on the EVM is not compatible with Kepler. So you still have to use the MetaMask if you want to um, 
use any any of these smart contract uh, applications on FMOS. I talked to the team about this. Ideally, Kepler would be EVM compatible, but I think that's really, really hard um, and would probably never come um, because we want to get away from Ethereum, right? But the other option would be that FMOS just has their native wallet, which is much smoother, has a better interface because I fully agree, MetaMask really, really sucks. But right now it's still this hybrid solution. I think they still have a lot of little bugs to, to fix. Um, IBC channels, UX, UI, performance of the chain itself. Yeah, there's some more questions here. Uh, BlackCrypt is saying there's no way to send FMOS from MetaMask to the Cosmic ecosystem. I addressed that, I think, and they're working on it. But yeah, lastly, let's look into the FMOS price, how it has been performing. It's currently ranked 162 based on the Genesis supply, which was 200 million tokens, right? Um, it currently has a market cap of 281 million. So that's pretty low for a smart contract platform. The price is $1.38. And when it came out and when it launched, it shot all the way up to nearly $7, right? That's the all-time high around a month ago when they relaunched the chain, April 28. Um, and we're currently down 80% from that top, from that peak. Um, and I'm getting really interested at these levels. So I actually, like I said, I have Atom ready that I want to buy FMOS with, and I want to um, bring it over, which is currently impossible. So I have to route through a centralized exchange, convert it to Ethereum, bridge Ethereum via Nomad over to FMOS, and then I can buy it on Diffusion. That's my current game plan. Um, it's going to be costly, but yeah, I really want FMOS tokens right now. Uh, can it go lower? Of course it can go lower. It can go to 50, 60 cents. Why not? This is crypto. It's extremely volatile. So please be aware of that. Don't just buy FMOS now because I, I'm saying I'm buying it. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm doing now. Um, and yeah, we'll see how it ages, how it goes. But I also want to be prepared when the staking rewards go live so that I get you know, the, the initial high staking rewards. Um, there will be airdrops more and more um, for FMOS stakers and holders and probably governance participants. Always keep that in your mind. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll keep you posted on the next one. Stay safe, guys, and be good.